How are you? I promise the lights will come on. Or is this the new Christmas style we're doing? Well, Christmas is two days away, which is a little nerve-wracking to me, uh, because I haven't finished. So at 12.30, if any of you want to meet, I'll be right out front. We'll take a large van and go Christmas shopping to finish if any of you need to continue. Gentlemen, I'll meet most of you right out front. (laughs) You know... (laughs) Somebody say amen? Yeah, yeah, Gary Walker probably would be my guess. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> hey, for some of you, you might not know who I am other than this name that's in the bulletin that you see in front of you. My name is Brad Quillen, and uh, I'm the student ministries pastor here, youth pastor. I work with junior high and high school. And uh, it's interesting, as I was thinking about that idea that there might be some of you that don't know me, uh, I've been around here since about 98. Uh, 98 and 99, I was an intern years and years ago. And if you want to walk, I can walk you through the church and show you the things that I broke as an intern. And uh, many of them are still broken, but uh, it's kind of my trademark and my, my, what I left here. And then I went to college, got my bachelor's degree, came back in 02 and started as a college pastor, which is a crazy idea at the age of 24 to be a college pastor and work with college students. And uh, morphed into junior high and high school ministry and then left in 09 for a season and came back uh, June of this year. So this is my third stint. And as I was writing it down, I thought, well, all these other dates had an end date, so what's the end date on the 2012 to what? And I just wrote rapture. So that's what I'm hoping for. (laughs) That, uh, yeah. Rapture and that I'm not left. So either because I didn't make the grade or I'm a part of the 144,000, but we can get into that later. Hey, uh, I don't want to be Billy Graham. Uh, I, some of you don't know my family, and we have a little one. He's two and a half, and uh, last week, what a fun, fun time to watch our kids of the church uh, be a part of the church, and our son, first one, pastor's kid, offered two really good views of himself. The first one was this. That's him with his back turned. That <laughs> got a good Chris Seibert laugh out of that, uh, and he's in the lobby, and all of you heard him. That tells you what it's. <laughs> Imagine being in a confined room on a staff meeting morning when he starts laughing. Uh, that was the majority of the Christmas play right here last week in the second service. Was this because he was fascinated by what was going on back here? But then when he did decide to turn and make his debut, it was this. <laughs> The apple don't fall far from the tree. (laughs) I just don't know which tree I want to say he fell from with my wife in the building. So, (laughs) I I said to someone this week, I said, you know, uh, I'm getting old. And they said, what do you mean? I said, my kid's in the Christmas program. That made me just last week go, oh. Man, that, I mean, it's just such a different season in life. And then uh, my wife and my son and I, this is uh, us for our Christmas card, and my wife is a beautiful young lady, and uh, I'm an old, uh, balding, middle-aged man. Uh, Scott's two and a half, a little, roughly, and uh, when, I, when we got married back in, in uh, oh, s- oh boy, oh six. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it was just such a time of bliss, I don't remember when it was. Uh, this is all we're doing is jokes all morning, folks. This is just a comedy routine. So, uh, when it, it was uh, January 7th of 06, and um, some of you guys, I know I just beat. Uh, and, and we got married. My wife, we joked when we were having, we decided, when, you know, when do we want to have kids? When do you want to have kids? You know, all this stuff. And my wife said, well, after the first, I, I would, I think three years apart is like perfect. And I was like, okay. Because my brother's, my brother's six years older than me and four years older than me, and then, and then I'm the baby. And, and I, these are things guys don't think about for you young ladies. We don't think about the spacing of children. It, it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, so my wife is uh, about four months pregnant, four and a half months pregnant, and she came home a couple months ago from the doctor and said, well, well, I found out the due date. I said, well, when is it? And she goes, uh, May 25th. And I said, that's the exact same date as Scott's three years later. (laughs) 
That's, what I, that's the pressure I live with, folks, every day. <laughs> these, these are the stresses I live with. Three years to the day, my wife is, I mean, that's how scheduled she is. She, I mean, three years to the day, I'm having a second child. So when number three, four, and five come, that's when it's really going to get stressful. Uh, but uh, Scott's two and a half, and then uh, we got a little one in the oven, and uh, he'll be here sometime in late May, uh, Lord willing, that uh, that goes well. So that's a little bit about me. Enough about that. I got to confess to you that I'm a horrible gift giver. I really am. <laughs> I bought my wife. I, got, I went to Simpson University uh, for my undergraduate, and, and uh, I just finished my master's degree education, and uh, I, was, I was due for a new sweatshirt, and I thought, oh, I just, I just, I'm just going to get one, you know? <laughs> I, I'm bad at waiting for things. I'm like most males. I just, now, you know, most Americans. So I ordered this sweatshirt, and I noticed Lori's college sweatshirt was a little um, frazzled, we'll say. And uh, so I ordered her one online, had it shipped to me in my name, and I thought, I'll just hold this out to Christmas. And this wasn't but four weeks ago, five weeks ago, that I decided to do this. And so I, I had it mailed to me, and uh, I, I get the package, and I'm like... Hey, where am I going to hide this? I mean, if my wife can three years plan her children out exactly, she's going to find it wherever I hide it. You know, this, the house we live in, I have no idea where most of the stuff is, and she knows where everything's at. Uh, right now, I have Legos in my closet, and I don't know how they got there. I'm sure they're for Scott for his Christmas, but there's Legos in my closet. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know where I'm going to hide this, how I'm going to deal with this. So I just went, that and I can't stand. Like, I love seeing her happy. And so I'm like, I'm just going to put it, I'm just going to put it in her closet. So, so it would be kind of like one of those moments of, oh my gosh, he bought me this. Well, I couldn't stand the thought of not seeing the reaction. So it was, it was cool out one evening, and I said, well, why don't you go grab a sweatshirt? And she's like, well, I've got this little sweater on, like the little, I don't even know what you call those things. If I did, you'd all have to beat me up for knowing what the name of it is. Some little thingy that was wrapped around her. I said, it's a little colder going, just go get the sweatshirt so I can see what your reaction is going to be like. And so uh, she goes in the house, and I kind of go behind her quietly. Not, quietly for me is a bad example, but I walk behind her, <laughs> you know, and uh, just kind of peek around the corner. And she's like, what is this? And I'm like, yes, you know. Uh, and so, because I, I just love seeing the joy. I love seeing that. And, and it's not because I was trying to butter her up for anything or earn favor or repair something I had damaged. Uh, but it was just because I just love seeing that excitement. And I love for her to be excited. And my son has really ruined this for me. Because every time, this uh, Thursday, Jeremiah and I had to run to Ikea in Sacramento to get some stuff. And, um, and I, was, I was walking out the checkout thing, and I'm like, oh, a soccer ball. $2.99? Scott will love it. <laughs> He doesn't need another thing, but I love just being able to walk in the house with that gift and be like, Scotty, come here. And he, go, and he yells, Daddy, and comes running out to me, and he grabs the ball and just starts having a blast with it. And I, I, I love that. And I, I, there's some day where financially we're not going to be able to afford to do that every time I go out. My wife will be like, go to the store and grab you know, milk or, or whatever, Oreos, and, and, that, uh, and then come home. But I end up grabbing like the They've got those daddy sucker bins in the store with the big balls in them. They're 99 cents and they're a big rack. Yeah, those, those have my name written all over. So I come home with one of those all the time. And she's like, another one? What are we going to do with it? And it's, it has nothing to do with the fact that we don't have room to store it, that it, it doesn't really matter about the money. But it was just to see for those few moments, that little guy totally excited. I'm a softy. I really am. Especially with him. And as we kind of enter into this Christmas season, the realization is that we're going to give a bunch of gifts. And I know even as Scott stares, starts to pull the gifts out from under the tree and starts tearing them like I did, but I was much worse at it. Uh, one time I remember getting an ex- my, a present that my mom had wrapped. You know, there was only certain ones that, that you would try and open. Um, you know, you could shake it and know if it was a sweater or a pair of pants or underwear, and you're like, ugh. And then you hear the one that kind of clanks a little bit, like there's toys or Legos or, you know, some other uh, pieces that need to be put together. And I remember my mother was an immaculate gift wrapper. She still is to this day. But I would take them, and I got to the point where I'd take a a utility knife or X-Acto knife and cut the tape 
and try and open it. This is how dumb I was. So I would put the box lid back on or wrap the paper up. And I can remember one time I couldn't find clear tape. So what did I use? Masking tape. It doesn't take a parent to get this, right? So I can remember, I can remember you know, this is, how, this is how, you know, just out of it I was as a child. Oh, my mom will never know. Yeah, right, she's an immaculate gift wrapper. There's not clear tape on there, but now there's masking tape on there. You know, and she would come to me like, hey, what did you do? I, I don't know. I got two older brothers, mom. They open my gifts all the time. You know, and she <laughs> just blatant lies to my mother. And the scariest part of that is Scott's going to do that to me. The apple don't fall far from the tree. That's my fear. And, uh, but I love, I love giving him gifts because I love, I love seeing when he like unwraps something or, or comes home, I love seeing for just a moment that joy that it brings to him. That as I give him that gift, that there's this huge amount of joy that it brings to his life. The other reality is that when you and I give a gift, that it's free, that there's nothing attached to it. Because if there were something attached to it, and for some of us, we could admit, yeah, I I did this because I was trying to get this. And that's called manipulation. But the reality is that I love just coming home or, or getting my wife that sweatshirt. That's just the most recent one. I get her gifts all the time, don't worry. <clears throat> that's just the most recent. But I love, I love to just bring something home for Scott, not because I need him to run up to me and, and think I'm the greatest dad, because he does that anyways. Uh, but I, I just love seeing that reaction. And the reality is, is that every time I... I do that. I give him something that's free. It's a free gift to him. And these gifts that you and I are going to exchange in a couple days, it's the same thing. They're free. Sometimes some of us have family members that we feel obligated to outdo. That's no fun. And I don't feel obligated to bring my son home anything. He has enough. He has more than enough. But I love seeing that joy on his face. And I do it because I love that little guy. I just asked a friend of mine the other day that just has a newborn, first kid, uh, about a year old. And I said, did you ever think you would love something so much? And for those of you that are parents, you get that. Now, you might love one a little more than the other. I I think that's going to happen from time to time. But some some parents are are nudging mom. Yeah, remember that season when you didn't love me as much? And, and, And we say to my mother that she has a favorite. But the reality is, is that I buy Scott stuff all the time because I love that little guy. I love him. I love my wife. My wife loves our little guy. We do it because we love the joy. We love seeing him happy. We love seeing him have fun. And the reality is is that every gift we give is from someone and to someone. And sometimes as a little kid, someone will say, you know, to Brad, and my mom would write Santa in there. Or I'll get something from my, <clears throat> my grandparents who would say to Brad from grandma and grandpa. There's always a giver and a receiver. Now some of us, if we're honest, or we posted on Facebook, that I gave myself a gift. It's not giving yourself a gift, it's just fulfilling a desire, okay? Oh, I deserve it. Well, maybe you do, but just just say, then I went and did it. You don't have to say, I deserve this. I'm giving myself a gift because a gift is from one to another. It's funny to me that I don't have to say that all the time, that, hey, Scotty, daddy got you this, or mommy got you this. The reality is that gifts are from one to another. And as we think about this Christmas season, the reality is, that this little baby Jesus was given from God. 
Probably the most quotable verse in all of Scripture that all of us could sit here and say as a group is, for that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For who? God. So love the world. So in that little tag, you could write, to the world from God. It wasn't meant for a select group of people. It was for everybody. All of humanity. From God to the world. It's just as you and I exchange gifts over the next few days that God said, I love this world. I want to see it be joyful. And I do it out of love that I give this gift. My son Jesus. Today as we, some of us partake in the great sport of football, there will inevitably be some sort of banner that probably says that. And as we watch the Niners dominate the Seahawks later tonight, (laughs) oh, I was so happy when they moved the game to 5.30. But as, as as we sit and watch that, We'll probably see somebody that has a sign that says John 3.16. There's a few verses throughout Scripture that talk about this gift. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Humanity was under the cloud of death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God couldn't stand the idea that man was destined to die from the sin of Adam and Eve. And out of that love... He gave a free gift that not only interrupts this thing of permanent separation from God, but it'll bring joy as we enter heaven. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Humanity had a death sentence, a permanent death sentence, but yet God in his infinite wisdom In his infinite love for humanity, his creation, he gave his Christmas present. We celebrate the birth of it. For some reason, we celebrate Easter a little bit more, that it's more special because of the resurrection. But don't forget that the birth brings about the resurrection. That this is just the beginning and brings about the resurrection, the death, and the conquering of sin and death. And if we look behind God's gift of joy and free gift, we see the man Jesus. That his gift was Christ. His gift was Jesus. Though sin equaled death, his gift equaled life. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for for it is by grace you have been saved. You could even read for it is by love you have been saved through faith that is not of yourselves, but it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. The reality is that our society sees God sometimes as a God of hate, a God of don't do this, a God of don't do that, a God of don't have fun. But the reality is, the truth is, that he set some of those parameters up so that you might have the most fulfilled life you could have. And I talk with students quite often at a Starbucks or at our house, and they say, but God always says, don't. And I said, don't your parents love you? And didn't they say to you, don't run out in the street? I sit there and I I talk to Scott a lot and I'll sit on the side of our curb right before our street where our grass is and I sit there and I say, Scott, you cannot go out in the road. Don't go out in the road. Because the reality is he doesn't understand the consequences of a 35 mile an hour car coming down our street and hitting him. And it's because I love, I cherish this little kid that I say don't. And God is the same way. That it's nothing that we can do. 
Because if it was, then it's back into this whole manipulation thing and we all understand what, how unfun it is to shop for that person that you're trying to out-top or out-think. But it's a free gift. And the tag said, from God to humanity. <clears throat> Gifts are forgiving. If I were to go out and buy my son, if my wife and I went shopping or sat at the computer and Amazoned it all to our house, and then just left the gifts in my closet, there would be no joy in that. There would be no expression of love in that. And the same thing as if you bought your husband a gift, or your wife, or your child a gift, or your friend a gift, and you never gave that to them, there would never be that chance of joy given. That chance of love being shared. That chance of appreciation being expressed. Because if we don't give, those things don't happen. Could you imagine if God hadn't given? Like I said, each one of these gifts that we give this season usually have a tag attached to it. A couple days ago, Jeremiah and I <clears throat> were driving home from Sacramento. We decided to bring the office staff a great present. And all of them were cheerful when we showed up with a box of these. Krispy Kreme, yeah, some of you are like, are there any left? No, they were scoured, trust me. Uh, there actually was one left, and it's still in the back if you want it from Thursday. Uh, just put it in the microwave, that'll soften it up, and you've got about 15 seconds to pound that thing. But <clears throat> I thought it was so appropriate that even Krispy Kreme used the word joy. And I kind of went, oh, it must be a divine moment for a sermon illustration. But, uh, <clears throat> but had we just come back and thought, oh, let's get, let's get some Krispy Kreme for the staff. And then just came back and went in the cafe, closed the windows, and just sat there and pounded them out. Not only would it be sick, but that gift of love, that gift of joy, that gift of excitement, that gift of sharing would have never been. It would have been rather selfish. But the same thing is a reality with God's gift. And for some reason, I don't understand why God has said, I'm going to use my people to spread my news and to spread my gift. Knowing that how intimidated some of us are to do that, how fearful we are to do it, how we sit there and give excuse after excuse after excuse about giving someone the gift of his son through sharing the gospel. But the reality is that God has this gift in, his baby, in the baby Jesus that not only was born of a virgin, that lived a sinless life, that was sacrificed on a cross for our sin and died and rose again for the reality of you and I to have eternal life with him. But then he goes, I'm going to use these fallen creatures that I created to spread that news. And you and I are all challenged the same. I'm no more special than you are in this, of proclaiming the gospel. And what better and more simple time to share that? It's like God says, I'm going to create two holidays to give you a simple way to share my news, my gift that brings joy, that's done out of love, and is free. The season is ripe for it. Will you hand out his gift? Will you pass around that gift? Or will you just leave it hidden in your closet at home for no one to share in? <clears throat> for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave. And for me, I've got to write in there sometimes and kind of change the sentence. Do I love my neighbors that I'll give them the gospel? Do I, Brad, love my neighbor? Do I, Brad, love my coworker? would be awesome to put in there. Do I love Jeremiah that I might help him be saved? You know what I mean? <clears throat> but for you, for me, do I love my neighbor that I will give him the gospel. Gifts are forgiving. 
So who are you giving God's gift to this Christmas season? We celebrate the most important gift. But do you give it? Do you give it to someone else? We celebrate it. We come in here. We worship about it. But do you give it? And the reality is that it's not just a gift that's temporary or a soccer ball that my dog is going to most likely chew up of Scott's. But Romans says this, but God's gift is real life. It's eternal life. And that's what you and I have to give. And again, I don't understand the the whole reason why God gave it to you and I to pass along. But he did. So as you leave this morning, there are some students that are going to be standing at the doors. And they're going to be handing out every one of us that leaves this morning. The very little picture tag up there on the screen of that. And for some of you, you've never accepted God's gift of Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior. And for some of you, that tag needs to read, to me, from God. And there's others of you that have accepted Christ. And you need to take that tag as you leave this morning and write somebody's name in there that needs to hear the gospel that's in your life. Not just say, oh, it's great to celebrate. Jesus is the reason for the season. Yeah, that's great. But we sure leave them short of eternal life when we say that. You need to take that tag and write in one of your neighbor's names, one of your co-workers' names, one of your family members' names as a reminder that during this season of the birth, the start of salvation and eternal life, that you might be convicted enough to share God's gift of eternal life through His Son, Christ. It could be someone at your school if you're a young person. But you need to take that tag and write somebody's name on it. And you can either write from yourself or from God. Because if we don't do anything with it, we might as well shut down as a church. God's gift is forgiving. How are you giving it? So as you leave, they'll hand you one of those tags. And you need to pray. God, who is it I need to give the gospel to? Not a condescending way, not a judgmental way, but through the love of Christ. To who is it you need to share God's gift with? Let's pray. God, you're good. Your gift is even better. May we, your church, share it. Your gift isn't much if it's not shared. So may we be wise in giving it. And as we leave and exit this afternoon, may we just take a moment to think about who it is that we need to give it to. We all have someone. We all have someone. And for some of us, the name's already in our head. Because your spirit is quick. May we be proactive in giving out your gift through your son Christ. May we have boldness. For you said we do not have a, or that we have a spirit of boldness. Not of timidity. But of boldness. May we have that this Christmas season. This season is ripe to share the gospel. With those. Our neighbors. Our co-workers. Our friends. Our family. That don't know. May we be bold enough to give your gift this year. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.